Do you want to join us or do you want to take uh, photos as, as your participation? Okay, thank you, Jeff. Um, so we're, we're only going to talk for 10 minutes, and the reason is because that's a, um, not an unwieldy amount of video for James to put onto YouTube, and we can continue the conversations afterwards. So please try and make your uh, comments at this point short so that we can um, have a lively conversation, and there's lots of um, amazing people in the room. So I guess I wanted to start out by asking a question, but the conversation can move however you'd like it to go. We're going to talk about this piece now. I'm wondering if anybody had any responses or thoughts about its title, Mass Ornament, or its YouTube title, Me Dancing. I don't necessarily have a thought. I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm confused by the title, Mass Ornament. Obviously, Me Dancing makes a certain amount of sense but I don't have a deeper thought than that. Um, I guess mass ornament made sense to what I saw in that I thought what I was seeing was in part about how we watch things as dispersed persons and then take them up into our own life so that you know, we can watch some entertainment and ornament and then we massify it by first being viewers of it, and then we can follow the pattern and reproduce it in dispersed sites, and that's what massification is. Okay, so um, does anyone know, it's a quote from a famous theorist. Does anyone know it? So, um, I think it's Adorno. So if you put in that context, do you want to continue? Double check it. <laughs> Maybe Benjamin. Maybe Benjamin. Yeah, although I want to think about this idea of massification and the inherent critique of con consumerism, capitalism, or the cultural industry as a whole that's sort of, you know, signaled by the title, um, if anyone wants to think about it. But you can talk about me dancing too, because of course me dancing is a much more sympathetic title. Um, I also think it's interesting because it, in the context of YouTube, it's searchable. So what you end up with would be to find this video, but also a whole bunch of other videos, like the ones within it. Um, and so then it puts it in this context of a mass that is, it's crack hour. Um, it puts it in this context of a mass that is, crack hour, is a kind of YouTube mass. And then it provides a place where you get a commentary and a volume of videos because there's a ton of these dancing videos on YouTube, um, thousands of them. Right, and then and so it comments on the title and it allows it to be searchable, which I think is interesting. So it produces a kind of comments and an original document. One might begin to imagine a massification which occurs on YouTube and using the vernacular and the kind of structures of YouTube, to, uh, which she figures out well enough to be able to then become visible or hyper visible. I won't hear you if you don't. You'll be able to find it. Also, when you do a YouTube search, you're kind of by using the vernacular language of YouTube, you end up, um, you know, w within the kind of search context that you want. And if you think about the algorithms of YouTube, look what it's given us. I mean, the funniest one is shoe collection. I mean, it's a really interesting and smart. Um, it's smart that YouTube gave us shoe collection. This is a separate thing, but I really like the way um, the way she uses. It looked like a disco ball or a Christmas ornament, which I think is a really nice way to visualize the massification. And so she's using all these tiny little moments of solitude. I mean, what YouTube does is use all these little moments of solitude to create a community in that kind of Benedict Anderson, 2011 kind of way. And she, I think does a beautiful job of visualizing that by using the screens to create this larger form, these tiny little screens with everybody moving in the same way. Um, it also, I think, uh, just going on from what you said, um, deals with a lot of the issues that we've been talking about during this whole show, which is this sort of private public nature of YouTube, because each one of those vignettes is recording a particular moment whereby somebody, it's almost, it's, it's cringing and it's embarrassing. It's almost like this person is by themselves letting loose, but yet this then goes out 
to this public, to this, and you have no control over where that goes. And so, in a sense, that public is very undirected or unfocused, and I think that's really interesting. The other thing that I felt was that the, um, the other title uh, references, you know, the video maker, filmmaker, artist, Phil Collins, and his particular piece, you know, Dancing in Ramallah, which is fantastic. It's this uh, marathon taking place in, a 20, is it 24 hours? I think it's a 24-hour marathon. Um, and it's essentially about using, you know, pop culture as a political tool. And so that is something that I think is probably reflect, or in, probably she's thinking about this when she's making this, perhaps. I wondered if people could reflect on Ruti's comment about Benedict Anderson's concept of community because I think that Benedict Anderson is quite celebratory of community and I think this piece is quite cynical about the community that is produced, um, or not cynical, quite disturbed by this notion of the same, that kind of community that's being produced across bedrooms, you know, infinite bedrooms across America of isolated people, and the idea of commodification or massification, you know, which we see really well pictured here, of you know, individuals who are exactly the same as everyone else produced by mass culture is written into the story of community that's being told here. In, in that regard, I guess the word I wouldn't, would use would not be disturbing, but skeptical. I think, um, of, of, of the nature of the community that's created. But I think what's striking about it is the way that she has withheld the soundtracks for all of these. Because every one of those dancers is no doubt responding to an actual mass culture text or, or a video that's produced or a song. Many of them are probably dancing to the same thing or copying one another's moves, but we aren't given that. We're just given the kind of occasional kind of grunt or keyboard click, um, which I think kind of emphasizes the isolation of it. But she's withholding the thing that might actually be the thread that is linking them together, which is the text that's shared. Which ends up uh, sort of taking away from the individual producers a significant amount of, you know, the kind of um, heart of what they're doing. And she's sort of empty, she's producing them as commodities as well. I don't, um, I don't <laughs> know pop culture well enough to recognize everything, but definitely at the end they were dancing to all the single ladies by Beyonce, <clears throat> which is, <laughs> which became, <laughs> but see, I think what's interesting about her ending with that is that that created, that became such a YouTube phenomenon, like all these people, and it became a gender crossing phenomenon for all these people to dance to that song alone in their bedrooms. And while I agree with you that she might be skeptical, I guess I don't see, I've never seen Anderson as so positive and I don't see her as so negative. And I do think that building on what, there is a way that now when you turn on that camera and you're dancing in your room, you already know that it's that YouTube community that you wanna be part of, especially if what you're doing is citing dancing to Beyonce's all the same. There's just so many previous iterations that you're stepping into and speaking to and wanting to join. What, the, what do we mean by YouTube community? The billions of people who watch YouTube who don't know you and you'll never know. It's a very interesting concept of community, one which defines a lot of how we think of ourselves in the digital era. In terms of whether it's positive or, or critical of, of what people are doing, I'm not sure there's enough in the text to, to say, I think you'd have to watch it, and I'm not, but it's observing this reality. Krakauer, unless I, I mean, you know Beyonce better than I know Krakauer, but um, <laughs> speaking of two great theorists of our time, um, but um, I thought Krakauer was actually fairly positive about massification, um, and that it was a celebratory, it was a pre-Ordorno, um, right? So the, the other thing I'd say is that it contrasts, I'm thinking of other texts that show replication of human activity. So a classic one is the Family of Man exhibit that Bart wrote about, um, of which there's a video echo in, in, a, in a certain moment of, of, of the movie Amelie, um, which at one moment stops and shows people all over Paris simultaneously at night having sex. Um, but those are about 
and I think falsely but, and mistakenly, but those are in some sense about the universality of, of, of humanity, which this is not. This to me is about the uptake into our lives of, of coordinated activity through looking at media. Let Beyonce. Me, let me just, let me make a shout out to the movie Life in a Day, which is a, is a, which is a movie in the theaters right now, constructed entirely from YouTube videos. And it produces that family of man story from YouTube videos. It's absolutely the impulse of that film. And I just, you know, if you're at all interested, it's worth seeing just because it's all about, oh, we're the same everywhere. You anthropologists in the room, everybody wakes up and, you know, washes their feet. Everybody wakes up and has a piece of something to eat. You know, look, we're the same everywhere. I'm also interested in the, the high-low thing that, that all of the YouTube work that I'm, I'm not that familiar with, but all the YouTube work kind of engages in, whereas this takes a massified form and t makes a unique artwork from it. And I'm also thinking, in comparison with this piece, a recent piece by Corey Archangel, where he took thousands of snippets, everyone puts a video of their cat playing the piano on the internet, and takes all those snippets and resequence them so that they, um, they match up with the Stockhausen composition. And, and so that's making the low high again. But the joke in that piece is that it still sounds just like a cat playing the piano. It's, and this kind of reminds me of that. Um, I have a couple of thoughts. One's just kind of dangling is the uh, interesting use of audio, uh, which had opera and some crickets, as well as the only uh, tech uh, or speech I heard was one, two, three. So how those fit in, I'm not sure, but anyway. Uh, hasn't been mentioned. But the other thing is we've talked about uh, this kind of uh, universal aspect of it, but there's very strong diversity if you look at the rooms. And as an environmental psychologist, uh, uh, what I saw was not, I mean, I, that, you could see those rooms as a focus and the dancing as kind of the background, in which case you've got uh, a lot of uh, individuality even when they're dancing uh, in a, uh, the same, same uh, uh, steps. A lot of YouTube studies, a developing field, um, thinks about these um, tiny bits of um, human life that are being recorded as going to be an incredible trove for anthropologists, archaeologists, historians who want to know how people lived. So not the surface action, but the details behind, and we can think of those as the mass ornaments. I mean, I think that's a really great point. And I often, it's, it's a window into houses we never had, you know, one anthropologist could see how many, right, over the course of a career and we have millions of them to dig from. I think we should probably end, but I'm wondering if anyone who hasn't spoken yet has something they'd like to share with us before we go off camera that, in relationship to our conversation. Um, I, I will tell you, and we're gonna move to this soon, um, our, the theme for this week is education and entertainment, and this is an extremely teachable video in relationship to introducing um, these ideas about how you make how YouTube and digital culture itself can hold art objects, high art objects. Um, students really get that. Um, and this, these ideas about community that are so live in the piece, again, like are just right on the surface for our uh, students. And so I also wa was wanting to show that today um, because it's a great teachable f film, video. Um, any last comments? So thank you all um, for beginning our conversation. Um, we'll go off line. <laughs>